The role of Paul in Christianity and how he destroyed the teachings of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ began his mission to call the Israelites back to God, many of the Israelites and Roman authorities were far astray from the truth. While many Israelites and Roman authorities rejected the message and teachings of Jesus Christ, a group of humble, sincere people of the Israelites believed and accepted his message and teachings. They accepted that God had sent Jesus Christ to guide them to their Creator. Jesus Christ asked the Israelites to be his helpers in God's cause, to call them back to the worship of one God. Some of them responded, O you who believe, be supporters of the religion of Allah, just as Jesus, son of Maryam, said to the disciples, Who are my supporters towards Allah? The disciples said, We are the supporters of the religion of Allah. So a group from the children of Israel believed, and another group disbelieved. Then we supported those who believed against their enemy, and they became victors. Quran, chapter 61, verse 14. This group of devoted followers held in high esteem by Islam submitted to God and pledged their allegiance to the Almighty and His Messenger, Jesus Christ. These companions, helpers, supporters, and friends of Christ were known as the Twelve Disciples or Apostles. The name Disciples or Apostles is used to differentiate Jesus' close companions from the remainder of his followers, whose numbers grew later. When God elevated Jesus Christ to the heavens, the Jewish people remained persecuted and did not have much power. No uniform authority stood to establish and maintain the actual message and teachings of Jesus Christ. The followers of Jesus Christ dissipated after his departure and little support remained to carry on his message, except for those who witnessed Jesus Christ and relayed his message and story to those who were not there, presenting it from their perspective. Later, strange new theories spread that were never preached by Jesus Christ, from him being an imposter to being the divine Son of God. Around 35 CE, a man named Saul of Tarsus came. He later changed his name to Paul. Paul was a Roman citizen, a Jew, and the enemy of Jesus Christ. He was a zealous persecutor and killer of Jesus Christ's faithful followers. En route from Jerusalem to Damascus, Paul claimed that he saw the light when he saw Jesus Christ appearing to him, filled with the Holy Spirit. He was chosen and commanded to teach and preach acts that Jesus Christ never did to the masses. Paul taught concepts contradictory to what Jesus Christ and faithful followers of Jesus Christ were teaching. Paul provided no proof as to what he claimed to receive. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. While Jesus Christ is the central focus of Christianity, the founder of modern Christianity is not Jesus Christ. Instead, it is Paul, because the version of Christianity that has survived is not the version that Jesus Christ preached. Instead, it was the version that Paul preached when he claimed Jesus Christ came to him in a vision and told him to preach new concepts. He converted to Christianity and wrongfully began calling people to worship Jesus Christ and spread strange teachings. Due to his power, wealth, and relationships, people started to adopt these strange beliefs and teachings, while the true disciples of Jesus Christ disapproved. The disciples clashed and argued with Paul because of his innovative and bizarre teachings, and the New Testament references this fact. Many Christians mistakenly took him as one of the disciples of Jesus Christ due to his claim that he was, but he was not, nor did he ever meet Jesus Christ. 
While some Christians elevate Paul to sainthood, Paul was responsible for destroying the teachings of Jesus Christ. He told people that they did not need to follow God's laws, even though Jesus Christ suffered and struggled to convey the message of God, which included teaching people to obey God's commandments. Many people took Paul's word and believed him, even though Jesus Christ never violated the law of Moses that came before him, even though the Bible clearly states, Till heaven and earth pass away, the one that breaks the law will be called the least person in the kingdom of heaven. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. This verse explicitly states that anyone that breaks the law or teaches others to break the law will be called the least person in the kingdom of heaven. On the contrary, the verse states that whoever practices and teaches the law will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Almost all of the concepts of the modern-day teachings of Christianity, including the concept of Jesus Christ being the Son of God and the Atonement, are from Paul and not from the teachings of Jesus Christ. As such, the teachings of Paul contradict the teachings of Jesus. While prophets of God performed miracles to prove they were sent from God, such as when Jesus Christ healed leprosy and the blind, Paul did not perform any miracles or show any proof whatsoever that he was carrying the word of God or even the words of the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Paul changed his name from Saul to distance himself from his former reputation as an enemy of Jesus Christ and a prosecutor of Jesus Christ's disciples. Paul met the disciples of Jesus Christ occasionally, but was not fortunate enough to live in their company. When he later came into the picture after the departure of Jesus Christ, he made some severe changes to the religion to win over the Gentiles, non-Jewish people. He introduced what became vital concepts of Christianity, including the idea that Christ is the Son of God, that he sacrificed himself on the cross to save humanity, and that all one needs to do to enter paradise is to believe Christ died for his sins. Half of the New Testament is written by this man who never met Jesus Christ in his lifetime. Yet Christians do not question the authority of this ex-enemy of Jesus Christ, and thus take his word as truth. The book of Acts in the Bible holds three contradictory accounts of Paul's so-called conversion, when he claims he saw Jesus Christ in a vision. The story has many holes. Acts chapter 9 verse 7 states, The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. This verse states that the men traveling with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could not see. But in Acts chapter 22 verse 9, there exists an apparent contradiction. The verse states the men traveling with Paul saw the light, but did not hear the voice who spoke. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Did these men that traveled with Paul see the light, or hear the voice? Why don't we have records of these witnesses to testify to this significant event? The answer is simple. This event never happened. The New Testament that is now in existence contains more writings of Paul than any other source. All his reports were written before the four Gospels. They are influenced mainly by the teachings and innovations of Paul, even though his writings consist of hundreds of inconsistencies and contradictions. Paul abolished God's laws, such as not eating pork, fasting, observing the Sabbath, and the instruction of circumcision. The early devoted followers of Jesus Christ struggled for years to uphold the teaching that only one God, the Father, should be worshipped, 
and Jesus Christ was only his human messenger. The real followers of Jesus Christ opposed the blatant misrepresentations that Paul was wrongfully disseminating. They had a strong understanding of his message and tried to maintain the purity and clarity of his teachings, worshipping God the Father alone and following his commandments. However, Paul gave Jesus Christ's faithful disciples a bad reputation. Paul gave these faithful disciples who were with Jesus Christ all along, supporting and helping him, the reputation of being lazy, misguided, and hypocritical. People mistakenly believed that Paul understood the message and teachings of Jesus Christ better than the disciples, even though they lived with Jesus Christ and Paul had never met him. How bizarre is that? Since the innovative teachings of Paul appealed to the Gentiles, non-Jewish people, Jesus' faithful followers were unable to stop Paul's misguidance. Although the first Christians were Unitarians, who asserted the unity of God and would have rejected the doctrine of the Trinity, Jesus Christ's message of the absolute oneness of God lasted in its original purity for only a short time, then diminished over the years. The very first Christians were not Trinitarians, and in fact never had heard of the Trinity, as many current-day Bible scholars acknowledge. Some Christians developed different beliefs about the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, over the next few centuries. They claimed that he was divine, calling him the Son of God, which eventually became the dominant Christian belief. Sadly, Christian leaders took Paul's beliefs as their religion even though his teachings contradict the Bible, and Christian leaders abandoned the actual teachings of Jesus Christ. Many biblical scholars recognize and admit that the formation of modern Christianity did not begin with Jesus Christ. Instead, the faith started with Paul, as shocking as that sounds. Sadly, Paul, not Jesus Christ, is the true founder of modern Christianity. Today, only Muslims follow the actual teachings of Jesus Christ, which we will prove later in this book. About a hundred years later, after the departure of Jesus Christ, a church father by the name of Tertullian began teaching and spreading the concept of the Trinity. About 300 years after the departure of Jesus Christ, the Roman pagan Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity and adopted this strange minority view of Christianity. He believed that Jesus was the Son of God and that all one has to do to attain salvation is to accept the fact that he died for our sins. Constantine believed in many concepts that date back to Roman paganism. The emperor contacted the Council of Nicaea to discuss and resolve whether Jesus Christ is the Son of God and other related matters. The Council of the Christian leaders at Nicaea understood Paul's strange belief set as the sect of Christianity they would follow. Constantine was the first emperor to make Christianity a state religion after Christians had been persecuted and killed for 300 years, simply for being Christian. The worship of the Roman sun god was rampant during this period. Constantine's strange sect of Christianity slowly grew in numbers, and the Pauline Church eventually gave birth to the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Protestant Church. Constantine banned all other Christian sects and executed millions who followed other Christian denominations. Only a tiny remnant remained of the actual teachings of Jesus Christ. God says in his final book that modern-day Christianity is based upon the whims of misguided people who in turn misguide others. Say, people of the book, do not overstep the bounds of truth in your religious beliefs. Do not follow the whims of the people who went astray before you. They have led many others astray, and they continue to stray from the right path. Quran, chapter 5, verse 7. It is very problematic that Christians take the words of Paul and others who came after the teachings of Jesus Christ to be more valid than the words of Jesus Christ. Modern Christianity has been reduced to an interpretation of the words of Jesus Christ within the context of Paul. 
Constantine and the Pauline Church also took hundreds of manuscripts and gospels that contradicted Paul's views and banned and destroyed them. Some of these manuscripts were written by the disciples themselves. The ancient manuscripts, written initially in the original Aramaic and Hebrew, were destroyed, and only the Greek and Latin manuscripts were spared. The words of Paul today form most of the books of the New Testament. Hundreds of manuscripts, including gospels and religious writings, were considered merely apocrypha, not part of the accepted canon of scriptures. The Church of Paul chose four gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to be their books for political reasons. Paul's church modified certain verses and inserted what they claimed were inspired verses into the Bible to support their strange novel views. Later, God sent his final messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him, to humanity to restore his message once again. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, thus reformed God's religion. This religion of God is called Islam and has always been called Islam, which means submission to God. God sent his final book to humankind, the Holy Quran, with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, confirming that the message sent by Jesus Christ was modified and corrupted by the human hand. So woe to those who write scripture with their own hands and then claim, this is from God, to exchange it for a small gain. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they have earned. Quran, chapter 2, verse 79. When God sent Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his final book, the Holy Quran, the small number of faithful followers of Jesus Christ, who worshipped God alone and did not take Jesus Christ as the Son of God or divine, were among the first to accept the Holy Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him.